I'm not usually the first to hop onto the next new thing. In fact, I tend to be one of the last ones to get my hands on the newest piece of gear or kit. Maybe that's just because I'm so consumed with growing the business and doing my own thing, or maybe I'm just not the trendiest guy out there. In light of those facts, I did get my hands on the new Strike Eagle 1 to 8 first focal plane early. So guys, I finally feel like I'm in the know. And now that I've had ample time to run the 1 to 8, I feel like it's time to compare it to its bigger brother, the Gen 3 1 to 10. Let's dive into it, shall we? Okay guys, by now you know the deal. We make content, but we also make some pretty sick products. So if you like what we have going on here on this page and you want a good way to support what our team is doing here at TA Targets, hit up our website. We have amazing steel target systems, cool gear, training aids, and free paper targets, and also night vision for when you wanna get naughty. Jokes aside, we would appreciate it if you all creep our site meander among our menus and scroll our scripts and consider supporting us here at tatargets.com. Now back to your programming. I took the one to eight strike Eagle first focal plane for a spin a few weeks back and I really ended up liking the optic. We discussed the specs in studio and then hit the range for some one take action in true TA targets fashion. And I'll put a link above my head and below in the description so you can quickly check out that video after you're done here. For today, my objective is to compare my experiences with the one to eight and the one to 10. And while they are somewhat similar in form and function, they are very different optics in some regards. Obviously, you know that the Razer HD line of scopes are some of the more expensive in Vortex's lineup. So is it fair to compare the Strike Eagle to the Razer HD Gen 3? And I honestly think it's more than fair. And in some respects, it's actually a bit unfair for the 1 to 10. Starting from the most obvious, the 1 to 10 is, you guessed it, 10x magnification, and the 1 to 8 is 8 power. The 1 to 10 has an obvious advantage there if you plan to shoot further distances. And I feel that in this aspect, both scopes are nearly equal. Both focal ranges offer a ton of versatility and will be perfect for anyone who needs to shoot close to mid-range distances. Moving on to some of the form factor, the Gen 3 1 to 10 is a 34 millimeter tube, whereas the 1 to 8 Strike Eagle is a more standard 30 millimeter tube. Most LPVOs that exist tend to be a 30 millimeter tube. The 1 to 10 does have a slight edge in that regard in terms of gathering light. LPVOs never really are as good at gathering light in my experience as a more traditional precision scope with a larger objective. One would probably assume that due to the 34 millimeter tube on the Razer HD 1 to 10, it must be heavier than the new 1 to 8. And you would in fact be cur <sighs> Hold on a second, guys. Um, so when I'm looking at my notes in the teleprompter, it's actually saying that the 1 to 8 is lighter than the one. Hey, Brenton, did uh, did you weigh these scopes? Uh, yeah, I didn't weigh it. Hold that thought, guys. Be right back. Okay, guys, sorry for the interruption. It turns out that the Razer 1 to 10 with the mount is actually about four ounces lighter than the 1 to 8 for a spokal plane. I know crazy but it's true. So even with the larger 34 millimeter tube and larger mount, you're getting a lighter weight scope with the one to 10. With that being said, we're talking ounces. Will you notice it? Probably not. Also keep in mind when I weighed these scopes, I do have the bases attached to them, but there it is. Side benefit of the 34 millimeter tube is you will get more elevation travel when you're using the two. <sighs> Here we go again. My teleprompter says that the 1 to 8 has 145 MOA and the 1 to 10 has 120. <sighs> Brenton, who's writing these scripts? Uh, again, that would be you. <laughs> He's fired. Okay guys, so now that I'm done firing myself, apparently the 1 to 8, according to Vortex, has more adjustment range than the 1 to 10. 1 to 10, why are you doing me so dirty? So moving on to the adjustment graduation, both optics are one quarter MOA per clip. No drama there. Both scopes have a fixed parallax at 150 yards. Both scopes have cap turrets. Once the caps are removed, you can easily adjust windage and elevation. And in that note, the one to 10 in my personal experience has a more defined and audible click when using the turrets. One to eight is a little bit less defined, still easy to use in here, but it's not as pronounced when you're adjusting the turrets as the one to 10. 
One last physical trait of both optics are the colors. Obviously the one to 10 is the stealth shadow finish. The one to eight is a bit more of a traditional black finish. And that hardly matters to me because by the time you're watching this video, future me has already spray painted both of these optics. Don't believe me? Brenton, drop a picture right here. If we're comparing colors, personally, I like the stealth shadow look more than the black, but I digress. Both scopes are first focal plane, meaning that as you zoom through the magnification range, the reticle will continue to get larger and larger. The one to 10 features the Vortex EBR9 reticle and the one to eight features Vortex's EBR8 reticle. Both have several holds for wind and elevation, albeit they are more of a generic hold for common calibers and loadings. Neither of these reticles have standard spacing between the lines that would equate to a flat MOA or milliradian measurement. I personally prefer the one to 10 reticle, especially on one X with illumination, as it appears to me as more of a dot. The one to eight is sort of like a half moon shape on one X, and it sort of reminds me of what a red dot would look like if you have an astigmatism. On the topic of illumination, the one to 10 absolutely wins. It is a much brighter dot than the one to eight. The one to eight has adequate illumination, but in super bright conditions, it does get harder to see the reticle. It's still functional, but it's not as bright as I would personally like. Aside from illumination, the reticles are very similar. On 8X and 10X, they are easy to see all of the holds and windage and elevation changes. Just like any scope, spend a little bit of time learning the holds along with your personal rifle and load data. One of the last topics I wanted to discuss is eye relief and lens distortion. Eye relief has always been a sore point for me with many LPVOs. And they often seem that at 1X magnification, they're fine, but at full magnification, any slight movement of your head could result in totally losing your image. My experience with the one to 10, especially on 10X magnification, is it's pickier about the eye relief than the one to eight. This is less and less noticeable as you run less magnification, but on 10X, it's very noticeable. Does it make me not love the optic? No, but it's something that I picked up on. And maybe this is because the eye box on the one to eight is a bit larger than the one to 10. I'm not really sure personally, but the one to eight is definitely more forgiving for me. Overall size of the scopes is comparable. Weight is comparable as we discussed earlier. Slight edge is given to the one to eight over the one to 10. So what really is the difference and which one is right for you? The MSRP of the one to 10 is $35.99 and the MSRP of the new one to eight first focal plane is $7.99. Honestly, I'm still shocked at how much I like the one to eight. And fun fact, when we shot the first impression video, I had zero clue what the price was. I only found out what the MSRP was after we were done with the first video. So price did not sway my opinion at all. I actually guessed that this scope should probably land in the $1,500 range and nope, it's about half of that. So this is quite a bit of scope for less than $800. So where do we stand and which scope is better and is the one to 10 even relevant? Honestly, guys, I'm struggling with this. I really like the one to 10, I've used it a ton, but looking at it from my personal lens, it's hard for me to jump to the one to 10 anymore. I could purchase four of these one to eight scopes for one of the one to tens. So I don't know what you are doing Vortex, but I like it. And I don't like it at the same time because it's kind of super confusing and I'm not really sure which way to go now. I pick up the one to 10, it's crystal clear. It's got good functions. And then you throw the one to eight at us and now you've got me all frazzled. I've been running the one to eight, I love it. I can say with certainty that I'd have no issues putting this one to eight on any of my rifles. I think the main area that the one to 10 has an edge on the one to eight is a bit better clarity and a bit better light transmission and a reticle that personally to me makes a little bit more sense. It also has higher levels of illumination. I'm starting to think that the better comparison for a more apples to apples approach would have actually been to compare the Razor Gen 2 E one to six with the one to eight. And if that's something you guys would like to see, leave me a comment in the comment section below. As far as to which optic I would prefer, so long as the one to eight continues to hold up to and perform to my standards, I'm leaning towards this as my go-to optic. I like the functions, I like the magnification range, and I certainly can appreciate the bang for your buck aspect. I'm curious what you guys think. Would you buy the one to 10 and spend the extra money or would you stick with the one to eight first focal plane? Let me know in the comments below. Guys, that's it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. And if you have any further questions for me, the comments are where you can ask away. If you made it this far, we appreciate you for sticking around. Do us a favor, like the video, and please subscribe to our channel. And please share this video with some friends or family. And don't forget, check out our website. And guys, I'll see you in the next video.